Welcome to this new episode of Chemistry and today in this episode I am discussing conduction. Now this topic conduction is part of electrochemistry chapter and it is introduction of conduction which is very important to understand the concepts associated in electrochemistry chapter. So let's meet on the other side of the video to get details about conduction. So now let's dive into details to understand the conduction. So to understand conduction, let's try to find out what is resistance. And you have studied resistance since in your formative years from class say 7th, 8th, 9th, you have studied resistance and you have studied the definition of resistance. So I would recommend you to take a pen and a paper and write down the definition of resistance and then when I explain the definition of resistance so you can compare the definition. So just pause the video and write down the definition and so the definition of resistance would be it is the property of the material by virtue of it opposes free flow of charge. So it is opposition of So it is opposition of free flow or oppose of free flow of charge. Now conduction would be reciprocal of resistance. So conduction is property of a material to allow free flow of charge. When charge is allowed to pass through the conductor without any hindrance, it is termed as So on your screen, you can find a caption. You can take a snapshot of this or you can write it down the definition of resistance and conduction. So now let's see what how many types of conductions are possible. So there are two types of conductions. The first is metallic conduction. And second is electrolytic conduction. Now let's try to understand what is metallic conduction. Since your formative years, you know that metals always show five characteristic properties. Now those five characteristic properties are metals are lustrous, metals are malleable, metals are ductile, metals are sonorous and metals are good conductors of heat and electricity. So, we are discussing the last property that is metals are good conductor of electricity. So in a figure you can see that I have connected a battery uh, along with the metal and a bulb is connected in the circuit. Now as soon as the battery is switched on the current or the charge carriers that are electrons are flowing in the circuit and as they are flowing in the circuit so the bulb will glow. So this shows that metal is conducting electricity or metal is allowing the charge to flow through its through itself or through the medium and that's the reason the bulb is glowing. So this shows that metals are good conductor of electricity but all metals are not same conductors or they would not conduct electricity to same amount. Now this concept is explained by band theory 
Now, according to this theory, it is all the metals have two types of bands. Those are termed as valence band. So this is a valence band. And next would be a conduction band. Now, this comes from the concept of molecular orbital theory that the orbitals of the uh, orbitals of the metal just mix together to form valence band and conduction band. This is basically bonding molecular orbitals and these are anti-bonding molecular orbitals. So in atoms, they are termed as valence band and conduction band specifically for metals. Now a metal to conduct electricity or heat, these electrons from valence band should jump to the conduction band and if this tr electronic transition is easily possible then the metal would behave as good conductor of heat or electricity now this energy difference will basically differentiate between the conductivity of that metal if this energy level is lesser the electronic transition would be much easier and if electronic transition is is much easier then it would conduct it would it would conduct electricity or or heat and the conduction would be very easy so because the energy is required is less but in another case say there is a conduction band and this is a valence band now the energy difference between this electronic transition is higher isn't it now the electrons which are residing here has to jump to this energy level or they have to absorb extra energy to jump from valence band to conduction band. So this electronic transition is not so easy. So the metal would not behave as a very good conductor. Now you know that silver is best conductor of electricity while nichrome is not a good conductor of electricity. It conducts electricity, but it is not a good conductor. Now in silver, this energy difference is very less or practically negligible. So electrons can easily cross over from valence band to conduction band and the electricity will conduct. But in case of nichrome, say this is an example of nichrome. So electrons would require more energy to get transferred from valence band to conduction band and in the process its resistance would increase and it would not behave as a good conductor. So on the screen you can see the main important points of how the conduction or in the metals is taking place. You can just take a screenshot of this or you can jot it down. Now let's try to understand what is electrolytic conduction. So electrolytic conduction is the conduction through an electrolyte. So in this type of conduction, electrolyte is responsible for charge carrying in the medium. So it is termed as electrolytic conduction. Now electrolyte is a substance which will dissociate into ions. So electrolyte should dissociate dissociate into ions in aqueous or molten state. So if a substance is dissociating into ions in its aqueous or molten state, it would be termed as an electrolyte. Now there are different types of electrolytes. So types of electrolytes So they are classified into two types. First would be strong electrolytes. And second would be weak electrolytes. Now if I explain strong and weak electrolytes, so it would be the strong electrolytes would dissociate to 100% or complete dissociation or alpha would be 1 that is all the it would convert into ions completely or percentage alpha 
would be 100%. Now, just to give you a glimpse, what is dissociation uh, alpha 100% means? Suppose I have taken sodium chloride and I am adding it in, into water. So now it is it would be converting into sodium ions and chloride ions. Now, if I have taken say 6.022 into 10 to power 23 molecules of sodium chloride, then correspondingly 6.022 into 10 to power 23 ions of sodium and 6.022 into 10 to power 23 ions of chloride would be formed in the solution. So this shows that there is complete ionization or complete dissociation of strong electrolyte and the examples of strong electrolyte would be like HCl is a strong electrolyte, HNO3 is a strong electrolyte, NaNO3 is a strong electrolyte and there is a long list and I would be just displaying you. Now let's try to understand what are weak electrolytes. Now weak electrolytes are substances which will not dissociate completely. That means that the dissociation would be very less. Alpha would not exceed, would not be greater than 0.1 or percentage alpha would be only 10%. So you can see that the, there would be dissociation, but that dissociation would not be complete. Now let's consider an example of acetic acid. Now it will dissociate as acetate ion plus H, H ions. Now if I have taken say 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 molecules. Now the dissociation is very less. So it would be say 6.022 into 10 to the power say 20, 21 or it may be something like that. It would not be complete and it would be 6.022 into 10 to the power 21. So this is the number of dissociation that the dissociation would not be complete. So in this case, because dissociation is not complete, some undissociated molecules are remaining in the solution and a solution containing either strong or weak electrolyte when conducts electricity through it, uh, through the solution, then it is termed as electrolytic conduction. So just pause the video and jot down the important points which are on your screen. Now you can see in the figure I have taken distal water and two electrodes are dipped in the distal water and it is connected to the battery through bulb and when the battery is turned on you can see the electrons are coming only till the negative electrode and they are not flowing further. This is because the distilled water does not conduct electricity because in distilled water there are no ions present. It is no ions are present in distilled water as a result of which it will not conduct electricity. But suppose now in this distilled water, I add a pinch of salt, say I am adding NaCl. Now as soon as NaCl is added, it would dissociate into ions as it will dissociate into ions. So it will immediately start conduct electricity. You can see that the, now the electrons are carried by the cations and anions and the circuit is getting completed and the bulb starts glowing. So when an electrolyte is added into water, it will start conducting electricity and this is termed as electrolytic conduction. So this is the basic concept associated with the conduction and throughout electrochemistry chapter this basic concept you have to keep in mind because it is repeated over and over and all the concepts that you would be dealing with electrochemistry are somewhere interlinked with this basic concept of conduction of electricity. Now you can just pause the video and jot down the important points of electrolytic conduction. So that was all about conduction and its type which were electrolytic conduction and metallic conduction. If you want to stay with us connected so you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter and please 
प्लीज डू सब्सक्राइब टू माई चैनल एट डोंट फो गेट टू हिट द बिल आइकन टू गेट इंस्टेंट नोटिफिकेशन एज अ स्टूडेंट इट्स एन अर्ज टू अटेम्प्ट मोर क्वेश्चन डू मोर असाइनमेंट्स एंड टेस्ट योर सेल्फ बाई गिविंग मोर प्रैक्टिस टेस्ट सो इफ यू हैव सच एन अर्ज देन फॉलो द लिंक विच इज ऑन द लेफ्ट टॉप कॉर्नर ऑफ योर स्क्रीन एंड गेट योर सेल्फ रजिस्टर्ड वंस यू रजिस्टर ऑन द वेबसाइट यू कैन डाउनलोड द प्रैक्टिस मटीरियल एंड सेटिस्फाई योर अर्ज एंड थैंक्स फॉर वॉचिंग द वीडियो